Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be busting some myths. M-Y-T-H-S. I am aware that I say that strangely and a lot of people can't understand when I say myths. So busting some myths, especially when it comes to millionaires. We have a lot of myths or preconceptions of how people become millionaires or multimillionaires. And some of those might be holding you back. So if you've ever dreamed of becoming a millionaire or a multimillionaire, listen to this video, stay tuned, stay to the end, because some of these might actually help you get out of your own way when it comes to becoming a millionaire. So let's get started. The first myth that we are going to bust today is that millionaires all inherit their money. Now, obviously, there are plenty of people out there in the mainstream media that have inherited their money or gotten their money through divorce or marrying somebody and, and things like that. And so we think, well, you've got to inherit it in order to get to that side of it. And there's a lot of people in politics that are in that world, too, where they've inherited a lot of money and then they get into politics um, and things like that. I think the governor of Illinois inherited a lot of money from from um, I think one of the Hyatt's maybe or one of the one of the big chains of um, hotels is what I was reading. Obviously, Donald Trump is in the news, and we know that he inherited a lot of money um, as well. So you know, we think of that that is the way that people um, get money, but that's actually not true. And you take a look at. I, I was funny, I was thinking about it, all, pretty much all the Shark Tank people did not come from a lot of money. If you look at Mark Cuban, if you look at Kevin O'Leary, if you look at Damon Johns, um, if you look at Barbara Corcoran, listening to her, she definitely didn't come from money. Um, and I, I believe all of them that have been on there are, are not coming from money. And, um, and their story is how they worked hard to get to there. Now, you might look at their stories and say, well, they got a lucky break, you know, they got a lucky break. Mark Cuban built a company that was sold to Yahoo, you know, things like that. And you go, well, they were lucky. Um, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think that if you talk to Mark Cuban, he would say that he, you know, he wasn't lucky. He worked really hard, brought some skills. It was in a different time maybe, but there is still that opportunity to get to your financial goals to get to that financial freedom for a lot of people that is that millionaire status that doesn't always have to be true you can get to financial freedom without becoming a millionaire um, and there are ways to do that if that's interesting to you reach out i'm happy to help you figure that part out but a lot of people do want to hit that millionaire status because they feel like that that will build security I was listening to a podcast, not to go on a little tangent, but I will go on a tangent. I was listening to a podcast, um, The Diary of a CEO, another self-made millionaire, um, and he was interviewing uh, Andrew Huberman, who is a scientist and works up at Stanford and has a very successful podcast himself. And Andrew Huberman said something which was interesting. I never think that when I'm listening to somebody who's doing science and health and that kind of thing, that I'm going to get something necessarily from, uh, for finance, but it's, you know, they kind of cross a lot. And he was saying that people want to have enough money to feel secure. And not that that's a new thought, obviously, but that is a new way of thinking about it. Instead of thinking we have to get to millionaire status or something like that, Maybe we think of money as security and having enough money to feel secure now and in the future. And that is really what we're all trying to accomplish. So if that means you've got to have a million bucks or if that means you've got to have five million dollars to feel secure, that's you, you know, and you're going to live a certain lifestyle that you determine. So millionaires are not all inherited. We think of those who have that rags to riches story of being the exception and not the rule. But I will tell you, having worked with many people who hit that millionaire status, um, that there are a lot of people that, you know, just work hard and, and save money and put some good tools in place and are able to hit millionaire status who aren't, you know, selling companies to Yahoo, that aren't doing things like that, aren't billionaires. They are everyday average people walking around. There is a book called The Millionaire Next Door 
I highly recommend it. I should reread it. It's been a long time since I've read it. Um, and that is true. There are a lot of people with a lot of money that you don't even realize are there because they are secure with where they're at and they're not, you know, they don't have money to go on jets or anything, but they are, they're doing their thing and living a nice life and feel secure. All right. Myth number two is that millionaires live lavishly. So this is a great segue. Millionaires don't live lavishly. A lot of millionaires drive beat up cars. Um, look at Warren Buffett. There was a great documentary and I should have looked this up before the video, but if I can find it, I'll link it down in the description. But, um, there was a great documentary on him talking about how he lives his everyday life. And I believe it might've been on Netflix or Amazon prime. I don't know. Um, but either way, it was really interesting to see how he lived his life and he does not live a lavish lifestyle at all. And people again will say, well, Warren Buffett's the exception, not the rule. He's kind of quirky. He's not whatever. Um, but I would say that most millionaires have a pretty simple lifestyle. They live in homes next to you. They, um, you know, might drive a little bit nicer car, but a lot of people realize how hard it is to get to that million and they do not want it going away. They don't do not want that security running away from them. And so therefore they are out there um, spending their money wisely. And oftentimes millionaires have money making money. And when you have money making money, it's not always available for you to go buy a private plane or a private jet you know, um, or to take a ride in a private jet. It was funny, I was, I did a LinkedIn po post and it's gotten a lot of traction on it um, because I took my first first class um, trip from Georgia, from Atlanta, back to Phoenix. And, um, and people thought, well, you deserve it and all this stuff. But it's funny because, you know, we're very personally, we are very focused on our goals and we don't travel like that and people you know some of the comments were things like oh you should do it you deserve it blah 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 um and and i, I don't say i don't but you know it was very inexpensive to upgrade to first class so i chose to do it if it had been a lot more money i would not have chosen to do it was it a nice experience yes it was a very nice experience but uh you know we don't have that in our viewpoint of how we get to our goals. And our goals are not just to be a single, you know, $1 million family. We wanna grow to hit that security level so we can, you know, retire early or, you know, just be able to step back and feel secure to be able to live our lives the way we want to, um, just like everybody else. So millionaires often will have money working for them and don't have the luxury of just paying, you know, $2,000 to do first class. So that is something to keep in mind is that we do, I've done videos on this where we have lifestyle creep. That lifestyle creep is probably preventing you from getting your millionaire status if that's what you want. Number three is, number three, not number three, number three is they don't work very hard. Um, this kind of still goes into that idea of they've inherited, inherit, inherited it. Oh, that's not easy to say. Inherited it. Um, and <laughs> that they are, you know, kind of just even living life easy, that kind of thing. That's not necessarily true. It's funny. It depends on the type of person, how they've hit millionaire status, whether that's building a company or something. But most people that I would say, you know, built a company or something of that nature, um, they really don't like taking time off. I mean, they take a vacation and they're like, we're back at it. Um, they are not necessarily living a life of luxury where they're not taking time, you know, where they're not, where they're taking time off all the time. They're not eating bonbons on the couch and watching General Hospital necessarily. Um, most of the time they are still working because they want to keep engaged with their world that they've built and um and just engaged in life and a lot of times you know life isn't necessarily satisfying if you are just taking it easy and and hanging out i mean i know we say oh we'd love to just live on a beach somewhere and do some you know do that the rest of our lives i say it too when we're on vacation on a beach but 
realistically, we want to be engaged. We want to be creative and learning and growing and figuring out things. You know, we were, we were blessed with the brain that wants to do that. And a lot of us do. So don't think just, you know, to hit that millionaire status means that you're going to take it easy. Some people do, but I tell you, those people who like win the lottery or things like that and don't continually engage and just spend, 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 they are oftentimes not millionaires anymore after a while, which is not, which is not good. Um, and that goes into my myth number four, which is millionaires are lucky. And you know, I, I tend to be like this too sometimes where I look at people, I'm like, and you're lucky. I have always been, and they, you know, somebody will tell me this is karma and that, you know, I put this out there, but I've never been super, I was very lucky in the family I was born in. I was very lucky with the resources I was given and that kind of thing. But when it comes to like, like business success or something, like I've just never, I never just like come in my path. I mean, I made $8,000 my first year I was doing my business. That's how much luck I really got, you know? Most of that was from family. <laughs> Thank you, family. Um, and so, you know, essentially, it's I worked really hard to get to where I'm at, and I wasn't lucky. There are some people that are very lucky to win the lotto, inherit it, you know, that I would say those two are kind of the luckiest things, right? But there's some people that just hit the right opportunity at the right time. But you know, I work with a lot of I work with a lot of non-business owners, but I work with a lot of business owners. And essentially, when they hit that stride where things are going really well in business and they're growing and they're building and, and they're in talks with maybe selling their business, is there luck involved? Yes, but there was also a lot of work that happened behind the scenes. And what they do is they tend to find ways to differentiate themselves that really take off. And once they do that, and you know, sometimes it's taking 25 years for people to figure out that niche that's gonna make them stand out in the market. And then they sell their business for multi-million dollars because of their niche that they've built rather than, um, than you know, necessarily anything else. And so I would say that people are sometimes lucky, but I also think that sometimes they're so focused on how do I make myself stand out? You know, how do I make myself this resource that people absolutely need? And that is probably what has done it more than being lucky is what I have figured out. So still working on that for me, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I promise. All right. And myth number five, this is our last myth is wealthy people have no worries. Now this, I would say is the biggest myth that I think a lot of people believe is the truth, which is, you know, once I hit financial freedom, I am not going to have any problems anymore. Everything's going to be easy peasy. Life's going to be wonderful. Don't worry about anything. That's not true. It's not true. I tell you the people that I know that are millionaires have just as many worries as people who aren't. Um, you know, they have the same concerns. How are they going to pay for college? How are they going to do you know, I was listening to um, a, you know, close to billionaire talk on a podcast and he was saying somebody was asking him about college planning and you can sit there and just laugh and go, what are you talking about? You're a, almost a billionaire. Like, why are you talking to them about college planning? Um, but he's got two little kids, like very young kids, I think two years old or so. And, you know, this is what they're talking about. To say that he doesn't have any worries is ridiculous because you know he was kind of going through his conversation of like is it going to be paid for by the time that they I mean is that a waste to put money away for that specifically is it not it should we do this should we do like and you might say well that's a good problem to have and of course it is but there are still worries there are still everyday things that happen you know they don't just have somebody do it um, and if they do have that mentality of just have someone do it, someone else will take care of it. I, I tell you, they're not going to be millionaires for very long. You know, they really aren't. There are reasons that people like the Shark Tank people are continually investing or continually looking for that next opportunity. Is it that they're just the greediest people ever? 
No, it is because they are, you know, they, they have concerns, they have worries, they have goals that they're still working on. They still have all the same human emotions that we do. And, you know, you listen to Tony Robbins is a great example of this. I mean, he will talk, I mean, he's very open about the issues that he's had in his businesses, which I'm very grateful for because it helps me get through some days. But he is very open in many of his conversations about how, you know, he was riding high, he was making a lot of money. And then, you know, he found out that one of his business partners were, was embezzling from him and had nothing but issues in terms of money and how was he going to get to the next payroll and you know like and somebody might say well he had connections he could call you know yes of course he was tony robbins like he could he could do that another person who came from rags to riches and found a niche by the way fits right into what i was just talking about but he, to say that he didn't have worries is ridiculous. I mean, that he still had worries. I don't care if he's Tony Robbins. He could call everybody under the sun and they could say, no, you were a bad businessman. How did you not know that he was embezzling from you? I mean, I don't know what those conversations look like, but that might be something I say if he's calling me up to, to get money to continue to get the business going. So essentially, they have worries just like the rest of us. And a lot of times, you know, if you're, we're talking about uber, uber wealthy, they have tons of people that rely on them to continue to live their lives. And if they're decent people, which some of them are, I'm sure some of them aren't, but some of them are, they care about their people. So I think to me, this is the biggest issue is that people think that, that hitting that financial freedom is nirvana and that all worries are gonna go away, all ambition goes away, we are still human. And so I really hope that that one really sinks in because I think people are disappointed and what ends up happening is they end up spending, 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 spending because they're trying to make themselves happy because they had this preconceived notion of what being wealthy looks like. And it's, it's not the way it looks. It really isn't. Life still happens. People still get sick. People still have issues. People still have, you know, kids that are giving them problems. The same thing happens every day. So to wrap it up, those are five myths that we just busted. I really hope that you take some time to let those sink in. Maybe figure out are one of those myths holding you back from hitting your financial freedom goals. And, um, you know, obviously we're going to continue to talk about the wealthy mindset because that's what a lot of us are trying to get to is that place of financial freedom. And what does that mean for you? So I hope this helped you in many ways. Next one I'm very excited about because we are going to be talking about why the real housewives of Bravo are so bad at handling their money. <laughs> so I hope you come back for that one. So with that, I will leave you here. Hope you got something out of this. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end and we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.